So in order to complete this square here on the left, we simply add 36. So in this video, we're going to be looking at completing the square. Now, completing the square is simply a method that we can use to solve quadratic equations. Now, you might be familiar with factorization for solving quadratic equations. However, factorization requires certain conditions. So let's jump straight in to an example. So if we take x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, as with any quadratic equation, there are three fundamental components of the expression. So we have the quadratic term here, followed by the linear term, and finally the constant term, which is just some numerical value. So in order to solve this using factorization, we need to have two factors uh, of the constant term that will sum or add together to give us the coefficient of the linear term. So we can quickly see here that the factors of 6 uh, are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. So 2 and 3 will indeed sum together to give us the coefficient of the linear term, which is 5. So if 2 and 3 satisfy this condition of multiplying to give us 6 and adding to give us 5, then we can then construct the factors of this quadratic expression. So that would be x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now the reason that works is because the x terms in each factor, or the first terms in each factor, will multiply to give us our x squared term in the original expression. Then the inside terms 2 and x multiply together to give 2x. Outside terms multiply together to give us 3x. So 2x plus 3x is 5x. And finally, the last terms, or just the numeric terms, multiply to give us 6. So this is how we multiply our brackets. So we can then write two separate solutions for this equation because we have two cases where this equation will be satisfied. So we could have x plus 2 um, being equal to 0 or we could have x plus 3 being equal to 0. Both cases will give us a result of 0 and satisfy the equation. So we can go ahead and write down our first solution x plus 2 is 0 and x plus 3 is 0 using inverse operations for that first one there so subtracting 2 from both sides will give us x equals minus 2 and for the second solution we have x equals minus 3. However we're not always going to have a situation in which these conditions are satisfied that is there will not always be factors of the constant term which sum to give the coefficient of the linear term. So let's take a look at another example here. So here we have x squared plus 12x minus 5. Now we can quickly see that the factors of 5 are just 1 and 5, 5 being a prime number. So 1 and 5 will not sum to give us plus 12 so we're going to have to look at using a different method for this case and this is where completing the square comes in. Now the first thing we need to do is separate the x terms and the constants. Okay so this is the the ultra straightforward method of completing the square and I will explain why it works in just one second. So let's go ahead and separate the x terms from the constant terms. So to do that, we will need to add 5 on both sides. So that will give us x squared plus 12x is equal to 5. OK, so the next thing we need to do here is try to imagine these terms as an incomplete square. So remember here, we're completing the square. 
So we can, we can look at this as an incomplete square. So we look at the x squared term, okay, and that gives us a square. This is a perfect square. x by x gives us x squared. Um, now let's add on that 12x and try to make another square. So 12x, if we break that into two pieces of equal area, 6x, we can just attach them to our small square like this. So now what we're doing is we're representing these terms as areas in this square. Um, just as a, as a visual representation of the problem. So we need to complete this square. In other words, we need to find what this missing piece is. So we can see that it's a six by six square. So the area of this square will indeed be 36. So in order to complete this square here on the left, we simply add 36. Now this square is considered complete. And as we all know, if we add 36 to one side of the equation, we have to add 36 to the other side of the equation. So let's add these two constants together on the right, five plus 36, this will give us 41. So now we want to express that left-hand side as a perfect square in order to solve the equation because as it is now with the x squared term and the x term, we can't isolate x, which is why we need to express it as a perfect square. Now, we're at the moment we're expressing it as a sum of all the pieces. So you can see we have x squared plus 6x plus 6x gives us our 12x plus 36 gives us the final missing piece. So, what we need to do is we need to think about what the area of a square is. Well, the area of a square is the square of the length of one side. So all the lengths of the sides are the same because it's a square. So let's take the top length here. So what's the length of this side? Well, we have length x and length six. So the total length is x plus 6. So the area of the square is going to be x plus 6 squared. And that's exactly the same as representing these as a sum, right? So let's write that as x plus 6 squared equals 41. And now we've written it in such a way that will allow us to solve the equation quite easily, just using inverse operations. So what do we do in this situation? Well, we square root the left-hand side and we square root the right-hand side. So that will give us x plus six equals, not forgetting the plus or minus, very important. If we find the square root, we have to consider that both the negative and the positive will square to give the, the positive answer. So x plus 6 is equal to plus or minus root 41, or square root 41. And finally, we subtract 6 from both sides, giving us x equals minus 6, plus or minus the square root of 41. So I hope that was very clear. I hope that gave you some deeper understanding into why we call this method completing the square with along with the the visual representation here of what we're actually doing and how we actually construct that perfect square so join me again for another video in explaining various mathematical concepts in very simple ways and please if this interests you uh, and is of use to you please consider liking and liking the video and subscribing to the channel okay take care See you soon. Bye-bye.